This is the opening of my novel, The Isis Trap, published in July 2016. The past, summer 2014. There were three of them, squatting uneasily on the stone-littered reddish-brown soil while the sun blazed down. There was no mercy in the heat of the Syrian afternoon. Sweat beaded the faces of the prisoners who had their heads bowed, hands bound behind their backs. Dark emerald cypress trees stood to attention like servile guards, flanking the figure of the young gunman. He was tall and lean, his oversized combat jacket hanging loosely on his slight frame. Well, Majid, his commander chuckled, what do we do about these three? Any thoughts? Majid stared blankly at the man everybody knew as Omar. He was short and wiry with shaggy black hair and a thick untrimmed beard. There was a hidden meaning prowling behind his words. You look confused, Majid. Have you forgotten what they're doing here? Look at them. They bore arms against us. Omar kicked at their abandoned weapons and Majid instinctively raised his XM-15 semi-automatic rifle to his chest as if presenting it for inspection. What was he meant to do? Omar was still trying to prize the correct response out of his young comrade. In taking arms against the Mujahideen of the Islamic State, they've declared themselves apostates. They are false Muslims. Don't you agree, Majid? For just a moment, Majid's gaze strayed to his left as he examined the faces of his fellow fighters. They were outwardly impassive, but he could read the raw fright in their eyes. He had fought alongside the captured men. He saw them as comrades in a common struggle. Did they not turn their weapons on us, Majid? Majid remembered the sudden firefight as a messy dispute about territory, an outbreak of hostilities with no clear cause, no obvious right or wrong. He had been hoping it would be easily resolved. What was the point of brother's blood being shed in anger? One of Omar's most trusted fighters was leaning against a lone china berry tree, recording the scene with a handheld camcorder. Now Majid got it. This was a test. He nodded briefly. Did they not kill two of our comrades? The answer was yes. Their bodies lay barely 20 metres away, crumpled on the parched earth, eyes staring up at the sky. Then you know what to do. Majid mustered a protest. I came here to heal, not to kill my brothers. Only God can truly heal Majid. If you want to save lives, you must do what is necessary. A man at the back of the group murmured something inaudible. Omar turned. His fingers stroked the trigger of his automatic weapon. Something to say? There was no reply. Only a fool would argue with Omar. He stared at the watching fighters, eyes alive with pent-up rage. Everybody knew Omar was pressing Majid's buttons, trying to get a reaction, but they didn't know why. The scene was still being recorded. Omar turned his attention back to Majid. Is there a problem? By way of reply, Majid pressed the muzzle of his rifle against the back of the first captive's head. No problem. He knew that to refuse Omar was to die. Majid struggled to keep his grip firm. His hand was shaking. His mind screamed, but he dared not put his thoughts into words. Majid's finger was still lingering over the trigger when something attracted his attention. A silvery grey dart in the flawless azure sky. The roar of an engine alerted the men to one of the regime's MiG-29 jet fighters. The first of the aircraft's rockets was on its way before anybody could move. Flame flickered in the trail of dark smoke. There was a chatter of small arms fire and cries of Allahu Akbar. Then the world exploded in smoke and fire. Like a tidal wave, a blast of raw energy swept over the landscape. An ear-splitting thunderclap announced a direct hit on the fighter's exposed position. The camera, recording the scene, continued to run. When the smoke cleared, not one man was left standing. <laughs>